So it's break week, and I have to say that there is something that I have not been able to get out of my brain since reading chapter 1121, and it is that new mystery man that was teased to us at the end of the chapter. And firstly, I want to say that it is crazy that this late into the series, at this point in the final saga, as Oda essentially announces the final race to find the One Piece, he is introducing yet another character, one who is going to be central to the climax max of the series. So yeah, we have to talk about it. But what do we really know about him? Because if we're being honest, we don't really know all that much. This character might not even be a him. It could be a her or a them. The only thing we know about this person is that they're a swordsman or swords person. But if you know crazy One Piece fans, and if you're watching this video, then you know for sure at least one crazy One Piece fan. Then for us crazy One Piece fans, there is a lot that can be surmised from just one tiny silhouette of a person holding a sword, so let's surmise away. And if you stick around to the end, I will give you a bonus idea of a candidate that I'm sure you haven't considered yet. And before we begin, I will ask that you please do subscribe to the channel. It would really mean a lot to me, and you would provide me the motivation to continue to be a crazy One Piece fan that discusses the series on the internet. But with that being said, let's surmise away. So the most popular idea that I've probably seen most people discussing is that this man is linked to Shanks or the Figurland family. Essentially that this is Shanks' long lost brother, long lost twin, somehow a Figurland family member. And this is primarily for two important reasons. One is the type of sword that he's carrying. It has been commented that the sword looks quite similar to Shanks' Griffon. Shanks carries a saber, which is a single edge blade sword, which is typically long longer and slender in the blade. And sabers also typically have a large guard. Now we can't say for sure what type of sword this mystery man carries because we don't really have a full visual of the sword yet. From what we can see, I would say that it could look either like a saber or it could look like a rapier, which is similar but super thin. But more interesting than the blade of this sword is actually the hilt because this sword has a thin guard around the hilt, a thin curved guard around the hilt, which is very similar to Griffon, which also has that similar curved guard that goes around the hilt. The second reason why he's been linked to the figure lands is that this mysterious character has been positioned in parallel to Figurland Garling in that final double spread. If we take this last double page of the chapter, the way that Oda has composed the panels and has composed the characters in the panels feels very deliberate. There's a nice symmetry in terms of panel placement, so it feels like each page is supposed to be a mirror reflection of the other. And in that same way, the characters who appear in each panel or window if you want to view it that way, you could easily say that that parallel creates pairs of characters and the relationship between each pair of characters are significant in some way. For example, often the pairs of characters represents this idea of two sides of the same coin, the most obvious example being Luffy and Blackbeard, but we can also see that in Kobe and Imu, for example, as representing the good versus evil within the world government or the marines. Or you could say that there is some complex character relationship or character history that ties two characters together. For example, the long history between Shanks and Buggy as being former friends slash crewmates who had now turned frenemies, or even between Kuzan and Dragon with their respective father-son relationship with Garp. Obviously, Kuzan has more of a metaphorical father-son relationship being his mentor, but there is still this complicated relationship or tie and bond between the different characters. Especially in that case with Kuzan and Dragon, with Kuzan supposedly maybe having killed Garp, although I don't really think Garp's dead. Anyways, so then if we apply this to Garling and the mystery character, because they're the parallels in this case, it does most likely suggest that there is some deeper significant relationship between Garling and this mystery swordsman. And the most obvious or easy speculation would be that this mystery character is a figure land himself. Or you could presume that he may be another one of the god's knights, or maybe even that he's the enemy of the god's knights. Now if we take this idea of being an enemy to the god's knights or being an enemy to figure land Garling in particular, I would have to assume that he's acting alone and he's not likely to be in another faction because I don't think we're going to bring another group into this royal rumble that we already have between the world government 
government, pirates, revolutionaries, and then even the God's Knights. The God's Knights itself was only recently introduced. It was only first mentioned in the final saga, or actually very technically at the end of the Wano arc, so at the end of the Wano saga, but still very, very close to the final saga. And so it would be pretty crazy if we have yet another whole other group to explore. And also the way that Dragon and Ivankov were talking about the God's Knights, it felt like the natural opposition to the God's Knights was going to be the revolutionaries, especially as the God's Knights are the protectors of the Celestial Dragons, whereas the revolutionary army are directly opposed and actively targeting the world government and Celestial Dragons. So it doesn't quite feel like we would introduce another faction into this mix and that this mystery man would be an enemy of Figurland Garling as being part of a whole other faction, but at the same time, we can't rule that option out. But if we were to think about some of the other options, for example, is this mystery character another one of the God's Knights? It is certainly possible. We already know that this group is made up of skilled warriors, and so we could have yet another swordsman, seeing as Figurland Garling is also a swordsman. But I do want to note that the other two God's Knights weren't holding swords, or it wasn't confirmed that they're also swords persons. The bovine character, the man with the mask. He looked like he was holding a staff, not quite a sword. And then in the panel of the female God's Knights character, we couldn't actually see much of her to see whether she was actually wielding a weapon or not. But obviously the God's Knights are going to be an important group for the final saga of One Piece. They've had a pretty good build up, what with being linked to Shanks, one of the most hypest characters in One Piece. They are intrinsically linked to the God Valley lore, which in its own right is a big deal. And then the God's Knights were also introduced by two very important characters, Dragon and Sakazuki, both of whom are also included as being very significant characters for this final saga. And then on top of all of this, the God's Knights being revealed to hold that level of power and authority in the world, authority to be able to preside over fellow Celestial Dragons, Dragons. Yeah, I would say the God's Knights are an absolutely important part of the final saga. And so it wouldn't be too surprising if this mystery man is another one of the God's Knights. But I have to say that if we are to get another member of the God's Knights, I'd be really interested in finding out how they really tie into the lore of it all. And what I mean by this is that I feel like this mystery man has to be more significant than just simply being another member of the God's Knights. When it comes to Figurland Garling, we can already tell of his particular importance, his significance to the series because of his part during the God Valley incident and also his relationship to Shanks. And so I think there would have to be some sort of similar comparable significance that this mystery man holds for the series. It feels unlikely that he's just simply a member of the God's Knights because then why him specifically? Why not the woman that we were introduced to or that dude wearing that mask? Which is why I feel like he has to have some further significance. You know, whether that be some internal conflict within the God's Knights that makes him directly opposed to Garling, or he has some other important relationship with some of the other characters involved, or is he indeed another member of the Figurland family. And then we have this lore of the God's Knights being this sort of generational privilege or generational honor and the Figurland family are the figureheads of representing the God's Knighthood. Or we could have a case where this is another Figurland whom, like Shanks, is somehow estranged from his family. Because we don't know what exactly happened to result in Shanks being abandoned in that treasure chest. Although I'd probably say that rather than abandoned, seeing as abandoned connotes neglect or some sort of negativity. It did feel like Shanks was kept in that treasure chest more for his own protection. But we know that there must be more to this story on how Shanks ended up in that chest. So this mysterious circumstance is something that was revealed to us in Film Red, which was also then confirmed later in Volume 4 Million. The Volume 4 Million being extra special material that was released alongside the film. And here it was confirmed that Shanks was found by Roger and his crew in a treasure chest following the events of the God Valley incident. And although it hasn't been outright confirmed yet that Shanks is indeed a part of the Figurland family, this hasn't been outright mentioned in the manga as to date. But the fact that Shanks is actually a member of the Figurland family was heavily suggested in Film Road. When it's revealed that Uta is Shanks's daughter, the Gorosei not realizing that they mean his adoptive daughter, then ponder, oh, does this mean that Uta is also a Figurland? Thereby suggesting to us that means Shanks is a Figurland, hence 
hence why they thought that Uta is a figure land. Not to mention that the young figure land that we saw during the God Valley flashback, he looked very reminiscent of Shanks. So I think by now, it's pretty much taken to be confirmed that Shanks is a part of the figure land family, even if it hasn't been outright confirmed in the manga itself. And then this has been taken to explain some of the other suspicious events that we've had throughout the series. Probably the most notable one being why the Gorosei accepted Shanks and granted him an audience during the reverie. You know, they told him that they're only allowing this because of who he is. And now we could understand that to mean that it is only because he is a part of the royal family. So then if we factor in this mystery man, this might breathe new life into the whole Shanks is evil slash Shanks has an evil twin theory. And if you haven't heard of that theory before, that is a long speculated theory. One that's been around for a while that Shanks is evil and is in cahoots with the world government. Or as we've seen others speculate, that that man that came to visit the Gorosei during the reverie wasn't actually Shanks, but his evil brother or his evil twin. A Shanks lookalike, but one that didn't have his telltale scar. Because you may remember that in that panel, we don't actually see the whole of Shanks' face. We only see one side, the side without the scar. And so now, with this mystery man who is widely speculated to be one of the figure lands, the stocks for him being that evil twin of Shanks, those stocks are rising. Now, I'm not sure that I personally subscribe to that theory, or especially that part that the man who went to go see the Gorosei wasn't in fact Shanks and was actually someone else. But I could see a much deeper, much more complex figure land plotline brewing. I could definitely see there being more to this figure land family being more members that are going to be important, especially if this family is going to be more intrinsically tied to the lore of One Piece than we initially realized. You know, we could have one of those cliche twins separated at birth storylines, a very literal take on that idea of two sides of the same coin. But another strong candidate for who this mystery man could be is the man marked by flames or the man marked by burn scars. So this character, this man marked by burn scars, is another man shrouded in a lot of mystery and funnily enough also introduced at a very similar time that the God's Knights were introduced, at the very end of the Wano arc, practically in the final saga. And because this man is said to possess the road Poneglyph, and in fact, the only road Poneglyph that we don't know the location of, we know for sure that this man, marked by scars, is deeply wrapped up in this final race for the One Piece. Because without him, we won't be able to find the Laugh Tale. So if we take this glorious double spread, of chapter 1121 to be a representation of all the major characters who are to be involved in this final fight for the finish line. It seems like it would be fair to assume that this mystery man marked by the burn scar who holds the last final road poneglyph, the one that's going to allow all the other contestants to find the one piece and indeed get to that finish line. I would say he is a major character deeply embroiled in this climax. What I mean is it could be fair to assume assume that this mystery swordsman is therefore the man marked by the burn scar. You know, not to mention that this far into the game, this far into the series, it feels slightly baffling that we have two mysterious men, both of whom holding so much significance for the final saga, and yet still so shrouded in mystery. You know, it feels like it would make more sense if they were just one character. But then if that was the case, you'd have to wonder why Oda doesn't draw the flame marks, why he doesn't draw the burn scars in the silhouette. You know, why not draw those scars to make that connection clearer, raise some anticipation and raise some hype about this character. Plus, when I asked the Joy Fleet during my live streams on who you all thought that this mystery man was going to be, the popular consensus was that he was going to be a new character entirely, an unknown swordsman separate to the man marked by flames. So let's keep considering candidates. I think an exciting idea or an exciting character would be Scoffa Gabar. As the left-hand man of Roger, of the late Pirate King, many of us have been long hoping, long anticipating his entrance, his reappearance into the story. Similar to how Rayleigh was so critical to Luffy and the Straw Hats' development, Scopa could also help the progress of our protagonist in some way, or at the least, reveal more lore in the story. And it is worth noting that some already think that Scopa is that man marked by the burn scar. So now 
now we could have a situation where Scopper is actually the man marked by the burn scar and also this mystery man holding a sword. Although I do have to admit it is a bit of a joke that whenever we get a silhouette, whenever we get an unknown character in the series, it's like, is it Scopper? Is that Scopper? I think that could be Scopper. But you never know, we could be right this time. But the obvious counter to all of this is that if this is Scopper, as far as we know, Scopper Gaban is an axe fighter a dual axe wielding man, not a swordsman. Then again, that could be easily explained by saying that Scopper has picked up new skills since retiring from piracy. It is known to happen. I mean, we have actually very, very recently seen the return of yet another much anticipated character who has, since the last time we saw him, picked up swordsmanship as a new skill. And of course, I'm talking about Gin, who after his disappearance from One Piece, from the East Blue Saga, has showed up in the final saga, now wielding a sword. So like I said, it is known to happen. And actually at this point, I do want to say shout out to Randy. Randy who has pointed out that Gin is actually holding a sword which also has a curved guard around the hilt. So very similar to the design of the sword that we see for this mystery man in chapter 1121. So maybe Gin himself will be that mystery man. And hats off to you, Randy, if that is the case. But if we go back to the possibility of this being Scopper, another sword that had this curved guard around the hilt is Roger's sword Ace. So then you could start thinking that we may have a situation where Scopper, after the disbandment of the Roger Pirates, after the death of its former leader, Scopper has been dedicated to maintaining Roger's legacy by preserving the last road poneglyph and also Roger's sword. Although I should note that Roger's sword ace is a cutlass and the cutlass is distinguished from the rapier or the saber because the blade is typically wider or thicker. Whereas I did say earlier that the mystery man sword looks like either a saber or a rapier. But again, we didn't really see a full visual of that sword. So it's really hard to say in any definitive terms what type of sword that man is holding. Could be a cutlass, meaning that it could be Roger's sword. And so then if that is indeed his sword ace and if we think about who in this world could have Roger's old sword Scopa Gaban is a likely choice seeing he is a former member his left hand man and also none of the other significant former members like Shanks, Rayleigh or Buggy it hasn't been suggested that any of them have it or if we think about who else could have Roger's sword, another likely answer is actually the world government itself. Roger was executed at the hands of the world government, and to be fair, Roger did go willingly. He handed himself in, so prior to doing that, he could have offloaded his sword or given it to someone for safekeeping, someone he trusts. But seeing as we are at Egghead and all the clone piece that we've been getting in Egghead Island, another really fun, a wild but fun idea is if this mystery man is a Roger Seraphim. And this sword doesn't even have to be the original Ace. If the world government didn't get a hold of Ace itself, Vegapunk could have just created a Roger Seraphim and they could have just given it any old sword that looks very similar for the Seraphim to use. Because like I said, Roger died at the hands of the world government and we don't know what happened to his body. This isn't a case like Whitebeard or Ace, and I mean Ace as in Roger's son, not his sword. It's not a case where Whitebeard and Ace, we know where they got buried. We know they were buried, we saw their grave sites, they were given a proper burial. Whereas we didn't see that for Roger. We've never seen Shanks or Buggy or Rayleigh or Crocus ever go on a pilgrimage to pay their respects to their former captain. We never see them visit Roger's grave. The more likely answer is that the world government took Roger's body. And in that case, we could have a scenario where Roger was experimented on, where his body was experimented on. And Roger may have even been that first experiment to create the Seraphim. Or if not, the first Seraphim, the ultimate Seraphim, because if the Seraphim are supposed to be clones modeled after the Warlords, what could be a stronger Seraphim than one modeled on the late Pirate King? Now, didn't I say that if you stuck to the end, I'd give you a fun, wild idea that you hadn't considered yet? If this is an idea that you already had, then let me know in the comments below. If this is a new idea, then please subscribe, like, and also comment on the video, because why not? If you've stuck around this far, then thank you so much for listening. Thank you to our patrons and channel members. If you'd like to be one of these awesome people whose names are scrolling down my screen, then please consider joining. But as always, your repeat viewership of this channel is enough. So on that note, I'll just say, see you in the next video.